deep within the rugged landscapes of the eastern Mediterranean, where the echoes of ancient whispers still lingered, an archaeological team embarked on a journey to uncover the secrets of human history. Their destination was the Kafzeh Cave, a site shrouded in mystery, where the remains of our early ancestors lay dormant, waiting to reveal their enigmatic stories. With careful precision, the team delicately brushed away the layers of time, unearthing fragments of a forgotten world. Amidst the remnants of long-forgotten fires and scattered bones, they discovered the remains of a remarkable individual known as Kafzeh 11. This early modern human had lived approximately 100,000 years ago, leaving behind a captivating tale, etched in bones. Kafzeh 11 was lying in repose, its skeletal frame resting on its back. The legs were gently bent to the side, creating an almost serene pose. But what captured the archaeologists' attention were the hands, positioned on either side of the neck, as if in a protective embrace. Cradled within the grasp of Kafzeh 11 were the antlers of a large red deer, a majestic creature from the ancient wilderness. The discovery left the scientific community astounded, raising myriad questions about the significance of this discovery. What meaning did this burial hold for the Kafzeh early modern humans? Speculation filled the air, and theories emerged like tendrils of smoke in the wind. Some experts proposed that this burial practice could reflect a deep connection between the Kafzeh people and the natural world around them. Perhaps the antlers symbolized a reverence for the animals they hunted, a spiritual link to the cycles of life and death. Others suggested that it might have been an intimate farewell, a symbolic gesture bidding farewell to a beloved companion or a cherished member of the community. Further examination of Kafzeh 11's remains deepened the mystery. The skeleton bore signs of a physically demanding life, marked by healed fractures and indicators of an active lifestyle. It was clear that the Kafzeh early modern humans were a resilient and adaptable group, navigating the challenges of their environment with skill and ingenuity. As the scientific community delved into the secrets of the Kafzeh hominins, a narrative began to unfold. It became evident that these early humans were part of a complex web of interactions, connected not only to their immediate surroundings, but also to distant populations across the expanse of the eastern Mediterranean and beyond. The antlers became a symbol of the Kafzeh people's intricate relationship with nature, a testament to their deep understanding of the land and the creatures that roamed it. The story of Kafzeh 11 and the red deer antlers became an enduring enigma a reminder of the depth of our connection to the natural world and the profound mysteries that still lie hidden within the ancient earth. The Kafzeh hominins remained an enigmatic presence, inspiring researchers to delve deeper, to explore further, and to seek a deeper understanding of our shared human journey. And the antlers, once cradled within the hands of Kafzeh 11, continued to hold the secrets of a forgotten era, reminding us of the intricate dance between humanity and the natural world, a dance that has shaped us since the dawn of time. In total, 15 early modern human remains, including 8 juveniles, were found in Kafzeh Cave, in a Mousterian archaeological environment, and were estimated to have lived around 95,000 years ago. In fact, 6 of the Kafzeh specimens have burials for their remains. A series of hearths, several human remains, flint artifacts, including side scrapers, disc cores, and points, animal bones such as gazelle, horse, fallow deer, wild ox, and rhinoceros, a collection of seashells, lumps of red ochre, and an incised cortical flake were discovered in the lower layers of the cave, which were later dated to 92,000 years ago. The seashells, bivalves from the species Glycimeris, which were found from layers before all but one of the bodies, were obtained from the Mediterranean seashore, around 20 miles away. The shells were intact, naturally perforated, and several of them had ochre stains and signs of having been strung, perhaps as a necklace. Notably, body ornamentation, grave offerings, and specialized tools hint at something far more dangerous, a sophisticated capacity for abstract thought and communication. The ability to cooperate, plan, strategize, manipulate and deceive may have been humanity's ultimate weapon. In fact, if humans were wearing body ornamentation or jewelry then they had the concepts of wealth and social structure. With these ideas we can speculate that early humans would have ventured into the wilderness to obtain rare items such as shells, bone and furs just as later humans would do the same to obtain gold, silver and diamonds. We will come back to this important concept later in the video. Indeed, the strongest evidence for the evolutionary change from archaic Homo sapiens to early modern humans can be found in eastern Mediterranean and North African fossils, ancient burials, 
grave goods and evidence for body ornamentation. Early modern Homo sapiens coexisted with late existing groups of archaic Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and other populations in Africa and Europe, until these species vanished from the fossil record around 50,000 years ago. For example, Homo 1, her toe, and the school calfse specimens are important fossils that show an evolutionary change from prehistoric to contemporary Homo sapiens. Homo 1 is a piece of skull that was found in Homo kaibish Ethiopia. This skull's age has lately been estimated to be around 195,000 years old. It is still one of the first early modern Homo sapiens remains, though. A more rounded and expanded brain case, and a high forehead are characteristics that indicate the evolution from an early modern Homo sapiens from an archaic one. Another incomplete skull that dates to 160,000 years ago was found near Herto, Ethiopia. These are some of the earliest modern Homo sapiens fossils ever found. Because of a few minor variations in their skull morphology, some scientists consider these fossils to be a subspecies of modern humans, referred to as Homo sapiens adultu. They exhibit a variety of contemporary human qualities, together with early modern and archaic characteristics. The skull's cut markings are also significant. These were created in a way that suggested ceremonial practice when the bone was still fresh. The skull also had the appearance of having been handled repeatedly and before polished. However, many of the transitional specimens are difficult to classify into a single species, because they exhibit a variety of intermediate traits, which are particularly noticeable in the proportions and shapes of the forehead, brow ridge and face. Some claim that these populations represented by these transitional examples are those on the cusp of modernization. These artifacts, together with others from the eastern Mediterranean, represent the earliest evidence of modern humans. They demonstrate that Homo sapiens had lived beyond Africa by 200,000 years ago, while the out-of-Africa hypothesis suggests that these bones may really represent a failed population. Meanwhile, an archaeological team embarked on another groundbreaking excavation. Their destination was the School Cave, also in the eastern Mediterranean a renowned site known for its rich history and the secrets it held within its ancient chambers. Little did they know that their findings would shed light on a mysterious chapter in human evolution. As the archaeologists meticulously unearthed layers of sediment, their brushes delicately sweeping away the sands of time, they stumbled upon a remarkable discovery. Carefully tucked beneath the remnants of a long-forgotten fire pit lay the skeletal remains of what appeared to be an early modern human, known as School 5. The School 5 individual was a member of the School Hominins, a group of early modern humans who inhabited the region approximately 120,000 years ago. However, something peculiar caught the archaeologists' attention. Resting atop the chest of School 5's skeletal frame was the mandible of a wild boar. It was as if the ancient human had purposefully placed it there, an enigmatic gesture lost in time. Researchers and anthropologists delved into the possible reasons behind this intriguing burial practice. One prevailing theory suggested that it might have held symbolic significance to the school hominins, perhaps representing a deep connection to the animal world or serving as an offering to an unknown deity. Further analysis of the school 5 skeleton provided additional clues about this ancient individual. The skeletal remains revealed evidence of a physically demanding lifestyle, marked by healed fractures and signs of wear and tear on the bones. It became apparent that the school hominins were a resilient and resourceful group navigating the challenges of their environment with remarkable adaptability. This adult male skull still has some archaic features, like a brow ridge and a somewhat protruding face, but it has grown relatively modern features like a higher forehead. Three children and seven adults' fossils were discovered, some of which are believed to have been burials. As the research unfolded, a captivating narrative began to emerge. It was believed that the school hominins were part of a wider network of early human populations, dispersed across different regions. Their presence in the eastern Mediterranean challenged the traditional understanding of early human migration, suggesting a more complex pattern of movement and interaction. The discovery of the wild boar mandible added an additional layer of intrigue to the story. Some speculated that it could be evidence of early human rituals or practices related to hunting while others proposed that it could have held personal significance for School 5 alone, perhaps representing a symbolic connection or a remnant of their nomadic lifestyle. As the scientific community continued to study the school hominins and their extraordinary find, 
the mystery surrounding the wild boar mandible deepened. It served as a reminder that the ancient world held countless secrets yet to be unraveled, each discovery offering glimpses into the intricate tapestry of our shared human history. The school hominins and their enigmatic rituals continued to captivate the imagination, inspiring generations of researchers to explore further, delve deeper, and unlock the mysteries of our ancient past. With each passing year, more pieces of the puzzle fell into place, slowly revealing the remarkable story of these early modern humans and their connection to the world around them. In point of act, the mandible of the wild boar, resting on the chest of School 5, became an enduring symbol of a forgotten era, an emblem of our shared human journey through time. What's more, assemblages of perforated, nasarious shells, a marine genus, which are significantly different from local fauna, have also been discovered in the cave. Since the shells are unlikely to have been used as food, it is possible that these people collected and used the shells as beads for jewelry. Around 200,000 years ago, early humans left Africa, possibly during a Levantine Ice Age, some making it as far as Greece. They brought their shell collections with them as they entered the regions. Clam shells were chosen specifically for their easily strung holes since they were plentiful on the beaches close to the Carmel Mountain Caves. Recently, archaeologists found the world's oldest jewelry in a cave in the western Moroccan desert, a collection of shell beads that dates to between 142,000 and 150,000 years ago. The earrings or necklace were made from sea snail shells that were half an inch long. Ancient shell beads from North Africa are linked to the Aterian culture, a Middle Stone Age civilization, distinguished by its unusual stemmed spear points and whose people hunted a variety of animals, including gazelles, wildebeest warthogs, and rhinoceroses. The 33 perforated oval, Tritia gibosula, mollusk sea snail shells were discovered by researchers in a cave. A single layer of ashy silt also contained shards of bone from wildebeest, gazelle, and zebra, as well as stone knives and scrapers, charcoal from old campfires, and all but one of the thumbnail-sized oval shells. According to a recent study, by looking at microscopic where inside the shells naturally existing holes, Scientists can show that people who lived on the eastern Mediterranean coast, 120,000 years ago strung ochre-painted seashells on string. That could provide some insight into the origin of string and, by extension, the development of clothing, fishing nets and perhaps even seafaring. Indeed, the human propensity for bling may date back as far as 150,000 years. The tiny seashells were gathered at that time by hunter-gatherers in the African eastern Mediterranean who cut holes in them and strung them to use as decorations for their bodies, hair, or clothing. These similar kind of perforated shells spread fast throughout northern Africa and into the Middle East, so the appearance must have been stunning. For virtually as long as there have been modern humans, collecting seashells has been a habit. Clam shells were discovered in Mislia cave mixed together with other items, and buried in sedimentary layers that ranged in age from 240,000 to 160,000 years ago. The battered state of the shells indicated that they had washed ashore after their previous occupants had died, thus they were obviously not the remains of Paleolithic seafood meals. There is no evidence that the Mislia shell collectors embellished or altered their specimens, and they appeared to prefer primarily intact shells. However, 40,000 years later and 25 miles distant, inhabitants of Kafzeh cave appeared to favor gathering clam shells with tiny holes towards the tops of them. The holes were a result of the bottom being scraped, and humans strung the shells together to create jewelry or ornaments. Regrettably, we don't know what they stood for, but it's obvious that they were used as symbols and that they were placed where others could see them. The shell beads were undoubtedly a component of the way individuals used their attire to represent their identity. The shells represent the iceberg's tip of that particular human characteristic. They demonstrate that it existed even hundreds of thousands of years ago and that people were eager to communicate with others beyond their close acquaintances and relatives. Each shell bead had a hole drilled through it, probably so the decorations could be worn as earrings or necklaces or strung on strings or garments. Many of them have rounded, polished edges, which denote the deliberate labor of a craftsperson. They probably hung close together because wear patterns around the opening suggest hanging on a string, and additional wear patterns on the shell's edges show that the shells brushed against one another. Additionally, the red ochre color was still visible in four of the shells. The string, which is the only component still missing, is also the most intriguing one. 
People were collecting shells 160,000 years ago, but it seems they weren't doing much else with them. People had already begun stringing shells together and adorning them with crimson ochre around 120,000 years ago, but what changed during those 40,000 years? One theory holds that someone invented string. Additionally, string enables people to create novel apparel and bag designs, complex animal traps, and fishing nets. Dating the creation of string provides another clue as to when those other significant technologies would have been created. Mastering fiber technology to make string was a critical step in human evolution. It enables humans to assemble various objects and construct houses, composite objects, and hunt with bows. Ropes eventually allow people to attach sails to canoes and create boats capable of traveling long distances. The oldest piece of string ever discovered was made in southwestern Europe 50,000 years ago. The tiny piece of string discovered in a cave in Mediterranean France is the oldest ever discovered. It has been attributed to Neanderthals, but there is growing evidence that modern humans were in Mediterranean Europe by at least 57,000 years ago. Indeed, this brings us to the question of whether Neanderthals were doing so entirely independently or under the influence of modern humans. Additionally, shells and colored pigments used for jewelry from near the Spanish Mediterranean coast have also been found, dating to 50,000 years ago, that could be attributed to the influence or presence of modern humans in the region. It's also likely that the form of communication was first used in North Africa and the eastern Mediterranean during a period of cold and arid weather. To safeguard scarce resources, they may have formed clans or other allegiances. Later, people may have used the shell beads to display their ethnicity or other identities and demonstrate their ties to a particular region. Nonetheless, even after archaic Homo sapiens broke out of Africa 200,000 years ago, it took over 150,000 years to conquer Neanderthal lands. In the eastern Mediterranean, archaic Homo sapiens took ground only to fall back against Neanderthal resistance, before a final offensive by modern Homo sapiens, starting around 50,000 years ago, eliminated them. Please check out all our other videos on human evolution and continue to explore the mysteries of our shared past. Until then, remember to embrace the uniqueness of our shared human heritage. Thank you for watching.